morning, everyone. This is the correct exercise session. My name is Andrea Gates from Boston University, and my co chair is what I actually met from <laughs> 10 years ago at the medical school. And we had a great session with many speakers. Uh, so, why don't we go ahead and start? Our first speaker is Nicole Shalitok. And we all know how much he was in terms of the work of um, the Hungarian Secretary Study Group. So, he's going to give, um, I guess, a summary of what has been done in the past 10 years uh, of the HESG. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Is it if it's too loud, let me know. This is a new thing we tried today, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not going to give my usual talk. So there's no mouse model, there's no pancreatitis, just a little bit. And it's, I'm going to review what has been accomplished in terms of, of, of genetics. And even though the title suggests, you know, it's a chronic pancreatitis session, but the major activity of the Hungarian pancreatic study group in chronic pancreatitis relates to uh, genetic studies and one of the first studies we started doing with the, within the study group for genetic studies. And uh, Peter always wanted to publish in you know very high impact journal, but I, at the onset I told him that it's very unlikely we're going to have those kinds of findings you know in Hungary. But still we can contribute important things to the genetics field. But this is a very interesting field because you need replication. So even if people find major things published in nature genetics, you still have to go back to the local cohorts and try to replicate those findings because uh, there are ethnic and geographic differences. So I went through the, the past 10 years and trying to see what we published and I put a short list together. And of course, you're not gonna see this. And this is 10 publications, which is the, the product of our, of our studies. I didn't include studies where the study group would just send some samples and in a collaborative fashion. I did not include meta-analysis or, or review articles. These are you know, genetic studies done either in Hungary or in my laboratory using you know, Hungarian cohort samples. So I'm gonna highlight some of the, fav my favorite ones actually, where I think, but first let me show you the, how the studies are designed, which is a very you know, amicable discussion with, you know, with Peter. And then basically what he's asking me that, why can't we do something which goes to nature genetics? And I'm telling him that, you know, let's just do something and then see where it goes. So we did two types of studies typically. We did some unbiased discovery studies where we sort of would focus on a gene and then see what's there. And then these are two examples, the, one of the early ones looking at the uh, SL26A anion uh, channel, which is a ductal, uh, ductal express gene and the spin promoter variants in chronic pancreatitis. And then in, in the first case, it was a negative study. In the second case, there was some, some findings. Or we did hypothesis-driven studies. And I have to say that hypothesis-driven studies in genetics are almost always end with a negative result, meaning your hypothesis is wrong. But hypothesis-driven studies are much fun. So we, we did some of these uh, first studies that on the, an elastasis and complex formation. This was done by Andrea Parnitsky and then the other study is a common variant in the lipase gene. And this was you know, with, with Balaj Nemeth. And both of them turned out to be wrong, but I think uh, they, they clarified an important aspect of, of, uh, you know, of, of the genetics. So here comes the interesting study that I liked, just from the past. And this is a little bit obscure. So most of you even who, who know me well, probably don't remember this study. So this is actually in the, in the cancer field. And it's an interesting observation that CCK B receptor, you know, seems to be highly expressed in pancreatic cancer. And there's a, an alternative splice form, which they call CCK C receptor, where the, one of the introns are spliced in. And as you can see down here, if, if I can find this. Uh, there's an extra sequence which gets incorporated <laughs> and signaling changes, cells grow better. 
So you get more like to get cancer. And apparently there's a, a variant in the intron which drives this alternative splicing. And we were interested to see, you know, if this enrichment is really true in the Hungarian cohort. So we did a genetic study. Uh, this was done by Anita Balaj primarily. And as you can see from this, it was it came out completely negative. I mean, not even a hint of association. Meaning, if if you look at the, the genetic data and just look at the p values at the end, there's zero association between this variant and having cancer or not having cancer. There is no association with survival. And we did mini genes splicing studies, and there was no effect of the uh, of the variant. And I think this is an interesting case because to me, this, even though it's a negative study, it's really ruled out that we should not focus on this variant any longer and or design any clinical intervention based on this misplicing because this has nothing to do with uh, pancreatic cancer. A similarly important but negative study, which we really did, did for my son because She's very interested in calcium sensing receptor. Uh, there's been a lot number of variants described in this gene, which were somewhat controversial, different studies publishing different results. And then Esther Hedy, you know, started a study and then she's gonna present this data. So I'm not gonna go through this particular uh, uh, study, but importantly, at the same time, we published this German group from high COVID published very similar findings. So this is an unusual case when two studies actually strongly support each other in their conclusion. And I think settle an important problem uh, uh, in the field. So we will hear more about this uh, coming up in this uh, uh, session. And my final short story actually goes back to pancreatitis and trypsinogen mutations and just highlight an interesting aspect that if you build a model, you need to support that the various, you know, uh, from various aspects. And this is a some of, this is a classic discovery, you know, dating back past two decades that trypsinogens are regulated by chymotrypsin C in a dual pathway, mostly de degradation, but they also stimulate activation of, of trypsinogen. And the way to imagine this in a in an experiment. Is, is like this, the yellow indicates an auto activation of how trypsinogen converts itself to trypsin. If you have chymotrypsin C, there's a little stimulation of activation, but the major effect is degradation. And the, the importance of this mechanism is really that mutations in trypsinogen interfere with this mechanism. And for instance, if you have mutations that block degradation, you get this get this very high activation while wild type is not really activated. And this is how most of the hereditary pancreatitis associated mutations seem to work. So if I put this in, in this scheme, all these mutations we characterize, they block or reduce degradation and thereby enhance the activation pathway. So there is one mutation which is relatively common among PRSS1 carry, mutation carriers, it's called A16B. And this mutation actually hijacks this very obscure activation pathway by chymotrypsin C. And this is a very interesting mechanism, but we never had corroborating evidence. We never found other mutations which would support this mechanism. And interestingly, this happened during the studies of the Pan Hungarian pancreatic study group. And I will show you later, just let me just give you this cartoon what's happening here. So this is the activation peptide of trypsinogen. This is where activation takes place. And chymotrypsin C processes the peptide at the end. So it makes it shorter, easier to, act, to activate. And the mutation, the A16B changes the very end from alanine to valine. So this cleavage gets accelerated. And after that activation gets accelerated. But the actual finding is, comes from this was a study done by Balaj Nemet. I can see two of you now up here and down there. Uh, this was a completely incidental finding which came out from, from mass screening of, of pancreatitis uh, 
patients in Hungary, where he identified the mutation, which is P17T, and just showing you the next slide. What this is right next to it, the A16B mutation. So it's very close. And the phenotypic with this turned out to be very similar to that mutation. So if you go back to actually the, the if you look at the title of the article we put in, it really validated mechanistically that that uh, scheme we proposed for uh, how the mutation behaves is, is probably true because now we find the second mutation which does the same thing. So let me just show you the, the actual phenotype biochemically. So this experiment shows you that the, how the end terminus is cleaved and then you can actually visualize it on a gel by from one band you get two bands. And if you look at the rate of this cleavage, it's much faster with the mutants and the, the new mutant comes in, in between wild type and the, the more known A16B. And the consequence of this faster cleavage is shown in the next slide. So during auto activation in the wild type situation, you get massive degradation, a very little stimulation at the beginning, but the mutations, you know, basically enhance this initial peak and you get more and more trypsin activity at the very beginning of the activation reaction. And then the new mutation completely supported the old mutation <coughs> phenotype. So this is just an example how even a, a little country, a little study group can actually contribute to a big mechanism by identifying you know, a mutation which, which, which supports an, a, an overall model of disease pathogenesis. So there's a number of ongoing studies that actually remarkably, many of them started years and years ago, and because it, uh, you know, it, it takes time. Uh, we're studying LSTS variants, uh, and I'm, I listed uh, the primary investigators on, on, on these projects. Uh, Actually, the 3B paper just went in before the meeting, and there are interesting findings there. Carnotrypsin B deletion variant, which seems to be important more in pancreatic cancer than in, in pancreatitis, and this is a fairly new field. Uh, Trip V6 variants are, you know, these are, this is the, the hottest new thing in pancreatitis research, uh, very unexplored. So I think replication studies in a, a, a local cohort are very important. Uh, Carboxyacrylipase hybrid, this is also a very interesting risk factor, not completely understood, you know, the extent of the risk and how it works. And then we have an active project in, in, in study group. And Balaj Nimet will talk about CTRC promoter variants, which hasn't been investigated in any other cohort so far, I think. So maybe Jonas Rosendahl did, but never published. <laughs> And then uh, there's a big uh, uh, pediatric acute pancreatitis cohort, which is being analyzed. And we actually heard the presentation on this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, so I will conclude this uh, uh, presentation. I'm, I hope I just gave you some examples how the, the genetic part of the Hungarian pancreatic study group has worked and how we will uh, you know, proceed in the, in the future. And I think, uh, an aspect I did not mention so far, that we are, uh, we are an important part of the pancreatitis genetics community, which are very few groups, maybe you know, five, six groups around the world, but uh, you know, they all know the Hungarian geneticists, which actually now uh, are major contributors to this field. Thank you for your attention and happy to address any questions. Question. Thank you, Mikosh, um, for starting the day with the, one of the favorite <coughs> topics. Um, so your last slide is intriguing. There's a lot going on that's still um, in the investigative phases. So what you do in the lab is very important in terms of the functional studies. Do you have plans in terms of performing population studies in a stepwise fashion once you find that these are relevant to chronic pancreatitis in children? So you missed some of the beginnings, because you know, and I even referred to you as because I showed calcium sensing receptor data. And I wasn't there. So. And you wanted, but but Esther had you repeat those things just for you. 
uh, happy many, to provide population time. Yeah. So many of the studies I, I showed, those are not actually my functional studies. Those are those are population based, you know, studies in the Hungarian cohort done by either Esther or Balaj or, or some other scientists. So we actually, do, and then if needed, then we do functional analysis in, 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 in the lab. I'm not sure what you mean by stepwise. I mean, it feels like- So would you do all of them if you have a cohort like a US population cohort and that this has not been studied and to see in terms of, because genetics, it has to do also where your genetic yeah. origin is. So it's not gonna be similar maybe between your- So we rarely, I mean, if you ask, we rarely organize replication in ourselves in other cohorts. Uh, we will move, but sometimes it, yes, as the, sometimes it does happen when we reach out and then uh, our German collaborators are usually kind enough to, to, to you know, they look at it. They're so fast. <laughs> well, they say it's an, another hopeless project, why not, right? <laughs> And so I'll ask you a, a kind of question in principle. So you mentioned the example of the CTKP receptor. Yes. That's something interesting. And then you kind of dismissed it because you said, well, actually, there's no correlation with the survival <laughs> and so on. And so it has nothing to do with it. Uh, and I just sort of wonder, I'm sure you're right in this particular case. I'm not particularly advocating that this is a key point. But just the principle, I mean, there is something there, there is a receptor which presumably under certain circumstances could play a role. So to dismiss it just on the basis of all No, 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 uh, I, I, com I completely, completely agree with you. Maybe I misunderstood you. No, no, I only think I dismiss that it's not because of the genetic change. The receptor is there, the receptor is important for cancer. So that's been established, okay. but but it's not because of that particular genetic change. Okay, so so that, that's not, that's not why the, impression that you the, said, the, not the su su suggestion was that you, if you have this genetic change, you're going to have this more receptor, you're going to have cancer. And that doesn't seem to be true. Okay, no, no, then I misunderstood. Yes, you sorry. You just dismiss it no, no, the, not, not the receptor. Receptor is great. <laughs> no, sure, no, no, it's not the question, but yeah. the question is whether it could under certain circumstances. Yeah, absolutely, that's yeah, true, no, no, that no. remains, that remains true, yes. Okay. Uh, congratulations, Nicholson, <laughs> one of the best examples of the hypothesis driven negative effect, the SS 26A6, uh, which of course the huge uh, uh, role in pancreatic ductal bicarbonate uh, secretion and discolored bicarbonate exchanges provide most amount of bicarbonate and we said okay no this will be the next major genetic article as you refer my question is concerning the methodology so there are lots of new methodologies came into light like the new generation sequencing and so on so what will this change in the next 10 years so when we will have 2x there and you will summarize here the last 10 uh, years what you will summarize. So I'm not going to answer that because Jonas Rosendahl will talk about it at, at length. So I think I'm going to leave it to him because this is this is the new methodology and how. It, but we just had a discussion at at, at breakfast. New for us. <laughs> at, at breakfast, and then even though we've been having these new methodologies available, there's very few publications on the pancreatitis field coming out with these new methodologies. So that to me that suggests it's, it's it's not that easy to use these methodologies so there are there are barriers but Jonas will talk about that in much more detail that's a great question thank you and uh, let's move on thank you <laughs> <laughs> I was asked to keep time because yesterday we, you know. <laughs> oh just make a quick comment uh, so the uh, CCK receptor uh, not causing uh, pancreatic cancer is similar to KRAS, where if you have the KRAS mutations inherited, it doesn't seem to propose to drive pancreatic cancer. Maybe a little bit of colon cancer with a similar mutation, but as an activating mutation within uh, pancreatic cancer, it seems to be essential. So there's some strange things about susceptibility versus modification and acceleration of disease with these mutations as well. So it's not just susceptibility. I agree. Thank you very much for your very nice talk.